Three policemen have been reportedly killed after an attack on the governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party and his campaign director general. The candidate, Murtala Ajaka, wants the inspector general of police to remove and prosecute the Kogi State Commissioner of Police, Bertrand Onoha, alleging compromise in securing lives and properties in the state. According to him, the attack lasted for two hours between 5 and 7 in the morning. Uh, he says that three policemen officially attached to him from the Special Protection Unit of the Nigerian Police were killed. In the meantime, the SDP governorship candidate, while at the police headquarters uh, to submit a petition on the incident, was tear-gassed and dispersed uh, by some policemen. The three policemen were killed by the ad, the ad hoc talks led by Commander Akeleji of the Nigerian Navy. This arrangement is being coordinated by the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Bertrand Onoha, the Commander of the Nigerian Navy, Air Navy Commodore Ajulu, and the Director of DSS, Mr. Tosin. These are the killer squad of Yayabelo in Kogi State. And with these people in Kogi State for this election, I doubt if we will have a peaceful election. As I'm talking to you now, over 20 people are confirmed dead. And I don't know where their bodies are. They killed these people, shot them, and took their dead body away. And they are parading some people in Lokoja CID command land that they are thugs. Among those that they are parading is the DG New Media of my campaign, Mr. I.D. Ijeli, who contested as senator of Kogi East in the last general election. Right. Uh, for more on this, so we're joined by Farouk Adejo Audu, Director of Communications, uh, Muri Same. Uh, campaign organization, as well as Nelson Ogoi, Director General, Kogi State Labour Party uh, Governorship Campaign Council. And in the meantime, we'll begin with uh, Mr. Farouk Adejo Audu here in the studio. Uh, well, uh, good to see you. Uh, thanks for joining us on Newsnight. It, it does seem that uh, elections in Nigeria have unfortunately become a do or die affair, you know, considering what we're seeing uh, playing out in Kogi, uh, Bayelsa, and of course, uh, Emo State, uh, paint a picture of how bad really it is in Kogi State. Well, whatever is happening anywhere else cannot definitely, definitely cannot be as bad as what is happening in Kogi State. The killings that took place today, the police commissioner took credit for those killings, killings of policemen. What happened was that early this morning. I don't understand. I mean, you're saying the the commissioner yes, police the, in the PRO of yeah. the Kogi State Police Command issued a statement and said that policemen had gone to the house of Adiji to look for thugs that were camping there. That that was how they went to go and look for thugs. And in the course of looking for the thugs, they killed three thugs and uh, arrested some. Now, to the best of our knowledge, I think about four people were arrested. One of them is the DG, I mean, is the director of campaign, the director of uh, new media for a campaign. There were no thugs in that house at all. There were no thugs. And even if they were thugs, how do you invade the house of the <coughs> DG of our campaign with an armored tank? The armored tank was supplied by the DSS in Koki, by the director of DSS in Koki. His name is Tosin Ajayi. Uh, and you have that you, for a fact? Uh, where else would thugs get armored tank? Black armored tank. Let me tell you what happened. Wednesday, last week, I issued a statement because we got a wave of this plot to go and attack our DG and our youth leader. They were actually going there to go and kill those people and claim that they went to arrest them and resist their arrest and accuse them of all sorts of things. So we cried out and they retreated. How they, well do you know this for a fact? Because uh, we're talking about state actors here. You're talking about the DG, uh, the state director of SSS in Kogi State. His name is Tosin Ajayi, yes. Tosin Ajayi, let me tell you, I will, I will give you the background. Tosin Ajayi is the third highest ranking DSS officer in Nigeria. He's the deputy director general of DSS. For no reason on earth should he still occupy the, the low office of director. Tosin Ajayi has rejected every attempt to transfer him from Kogi. He's not the only one. There's another person working in the headquarters here. He was the former director of DSS in Kogi. These are the people who are working with Ayabelo, and any commissioner of police that comes, they co opt him into it. Work, working with the governor? 
working with the governor in the sense that they are collaborators of the governor. This attack was led by the governor. You see, this is not, I mean, what we are saying is not something that is outlandish. Anybody who knows our governor knows that he openly brags and sponsors public. Well, uh, two, some two months ago, the police in, in Kogi State actually warned your party, the SDP, I believe, uh, not to drag the police into uh, politics in the state okay, but, but based on but, allegations of but, but they politics. How do you invade a private house and say you are looking for thugs? And these same police people, and I'd like to give you dates and instances. Mm. These same police people, on October 8, a thug executed two other thugs. An APC thug executed two other thugs in broad daylight in front of Grimard Hospital in Naimba. They know the talk. That talk is still free. What if he executed two people? One of them is called Abbas. The second person was the, the world chairman of the APC in the Yale world, in the Kenya local government. That talk is still working free. Another talk called Ismaila executed two talks in Ejule shortly after. He's still working free. Ismaila killed another person called Ibrahim, who is in Ejule. He's still working free. Our state headquarters, our state headquarters of the SDP, was burnt down three times by a guy called Abraman Little. Abraman Little is a, is, is a senior special assistant to the governor. Go well, I'll uh, um, come back to you yeah. because uh, Farouk, uh, did you, uh, that's not the first time you've been in this business. You've yes. been a communication expert and you know the implication of saying things. Uh, I take that full you responsibility okay, and okay. I challenge those that are to arrest me. Well, 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 that's, that's, uh, it's good that you've been able to bring in that. Uh, so now um, let's quickly bring yeah. in uh, Ogohi, Ogohi here. Actually. Ogohi, good to see you and thanks for your time. Well, uh, we understand that uh, your party. Uh, Labour Party is getting ready for the big moment this Saturday, November 11. Let us in on what exactly is happening as you round off your campaign. All right, thank you so very much, Suleiman. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's such a privilege to be here. Uh, I want to say uh, very, very clearly that um, uh, the Labour Party, uh, being a party that is one of the front runners uh, in the presidential elections, and beyond that, we've taken a uh, our campaign to every nooks and cranny of uh, Kogi State. Uh, at, at this point, I think uh, what we are doing right now is to consolidate on the things we've been able to do uh, over time. And uh, we are, like we usually say, uh, we are in the final lap. Uh, we actually have about uh, four, four more days uh, to the elections. And we, are, we say we, we are very, very much ready uh, to do uh, the people good. We have a contract with the people, we have a covenant with the people, and we are ready to deliver on such covenant. Uh, the great thing that is happening for our people right now is that the Labour Party, uh, of course, would not fail as at other times, just like we did in the presidential, to produce very credible, very reliable people of character, of competence, uh, and uh, that is what we have in my principal, uh, Barista Adejo Keme, who is standing for uh, the, that, that very, is our flag bearer, I would say, for this election. And I'll say very categorically that uh, we are absolutely ready, regardless of every other rumor that you've been hearing uh, left, right, and center, saying that uh, we, we uh, I think uh, I heard something over the news uh, over the weekend that we have collapsed structure for the PDP uh, and all of that. It's, I think it's basically one of the things that's, that's showing uh, that we, we are we're actually a force uh, to be reckoned with in these elections. It started with uh, the APC claiming in an, in an outlandish manner that uh, 21 local government chairmen of the Labour Party have decamped or have, uh, uh, what do you call it now, uh, collapsed their structure for the APC. Uh, that was in the news several times. We came out to debunk it and to say we, ha we are very ready, our people are ready, our governors are ready. Our, uh, good uh, to know that. If I may yeah. jump in here very quickly. I mean, from, from all indication, uh, your body language, your excitement, your upbeat, uh, you know, uh, nature right now it doesn't uh, uh, seem to say that there's any problem going on uh, with the Labour Party as far as, you know, your campaigns and your freedom to move around and sell whatever your vision or ideas are to uh, the electorate in Kogi State. Are you saying none of this violence is affecting your party? All right, uh, I would say that uh, when it has to do with the violence that is in, in the state right now, it's rather unfortunate. We can't deny the fact that there is violence. We can't deny, deny the fact that, uh, just like my, uh, my elder brother there, Farouk, was talking about, truth is, yes, there has been uh, myriads of attacks. Uh, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, violence, I would say, in the land. And we were hoping, 
even very this very day, uh, when the chief of defense staff was in the in the state capital to meet with the parties and their representatives, my principal was able to uh, say the same thing to him that one of the major challenges we have in the states is violence. Yeah, we have not been attacked as a group, and that's because. Like I said earlier, we deployed a different strategy to this election. Uh, we realized that over time, the normal, you know, rigmaroling, making noise up and down and shouting, it is good. It has its own place. We did some of that, uh, but we focused more on the grassroots. I think for the first time, we are the people that we can boldly say that we took on these elections or we took on these campaigns differently. We are coming with uh, a different strategy altogether. First of all, we had to do what we call a needs assessment. We went to the people. We had meetings. We, we negotiated. We had direct contact with the people and all of that. So it became a bit easier for us to move around. We didn't move around with too many paraphernalia and all of that. So it, it helped us not to be too much of a prime target. Okay, Nelson. Uh, thanks. Uh, let's uh, bring in Farouk again. And Farouk, uh, why do you think your party, the SDP, is a target? Listening to Nelson, it seemed to be uh, a well-coordinated uh, one for them. Security-wise, why do you think uh, your party is a target? target? Well, with all due respect to every other candidate in the race, and that includes my junior brother, uh, Barista Okimi. Um, I think the governor, and I, I'm not saying the APC, because this is not an APC thing. It's a personal war of the governor. The governor feels that Ajaka is the only person who stands between his candidate and, the, and victory at the polls on Saturday. And that is why. And the current violence, the one that was unleashed today, let me tell you. Is simply because the federal government made a declaration that they were going to ensure free and fair election in Koki, and they deployed soldiers so that the talks they have, the talks they have, prowling around, shooting and doing all that, those talks were finding it difficult to operate. So the security chiefs who are collaborators of Yaya Bello now decide to take take the challenge on themselves to cause mayhem. That is what happened. They, they took the challenge to cause mayhem because if talks are no longer operate. It means that the people are not going to be afraid. People are going to come out to vote. What they want to ensure is to suppress the votes. They want to scare people so that they will not come out and vote. Let's get, let's get, let's get, right. uh, let, let's yeah. get this in right. Two things here, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. two things here. Uh, you, you, you first, credit going to the federal government, uh, which is an APC-led government. Yes. And you say, uh, even though Yahya Bello, the governor of uh, Kogi State, is in the APC, uh, uh, it's not about the political party. Uh, have you, or I'm talking about your party, has your party uh, written any formal petition uh, to the DSS Director General here in Abuja uh, on what you have found about the uh, director of uh, DSS in your state? S several complaints and petitions. And, have, have, you, and have, you, have you gotten any response from the DGSSS? Well, I am not aware that response, I mean, we have gotten responses from either the DSS or the NSA or anybody. But we have made several complaints because we know what the man is doing. I'm talking about the, the, the DDG SSS, that is uh, Mr. Jai. We know what he's doing. In the last four years, over 30 to 40 people have disappeared in Kogi State. And he is the, uh, I mean, he's in charge of intelligence and security in Kogi. And the people who have been disappearing are disappearing in Belo's own uh, territorial district. I have their names. I will call their name one by one from uh, Adela Abu, the PDP chairman of Okinawa local government who disappeared in 2018. He was not the director then. The director then... When you say disappear, exactly what do you mean? I mean, they just went... Uh, they vanished on the face air. of the earth. And let and me tell you how it happens. People will come and identify themselves as DSS and Navy. Number one, at least one person has been a recording decimal. His name is Nicholas Akalize. Is a, a commander of the navy. Is a naval officer. Right. That man was the one who led the attack on the house of Adiji today. These people will go to people's houses in Okene, in uh, Adavi, and arrest them, take them alive from. These them. are very strong people. allegations, and we would like to seize the opportunity to, you know, to ask uh, that this platform is available, of course, uh, for.
the DSS and others who are being alleged to be behind uh, some of the violence going on in Kogi State. Uh, very quickly, let's bring in uh, Ogoi there uh, of the Labour Party. Uh, well, the Inspector General of Police uh, has restricted movement in Kogi State. How is this likely to affect uh, your campaign since the election is, uh, uh, you know, uh, November 11? Still have some days to go. Okay, thank you very much. You see, we are already rounding up, like I said, um, the restriction of movements. Uh, I know, of course, it's, it's really a welcome idea because of the spate of violence in the state. However, it is, it is very important uh, to note uh, that, uh, like I said earlier, we have deployed a different strategy for these elections. Uh, the main reason why you hear, so, like I said earlier, some of these, uh, the, of course, the high-ranking uh, parties uh, seem to be, you know, looking for ways to sabotage or to say things about us or to bring things up that look like uh, we're not in the race or we're not uh, doing anything much or that we are partnering with them is because we deploy, like I said, a different uh, strategy. And part of our strategy is that we have built networks. What we are doing, we are not... Uh, a party that is trying to build a structure anew. We already have a structure that has been there through the obedient movement during the presidential campaigns. Uh, we've been able to build structures in every local government, the wards and the polling units. As a matter of fact, while others were trying to do all the campaigns and gather all the support, we were waiting for them at the polling units. As a matter of fact, we are waiting for them to come and meet us there because we took it to the doorsteps. We took it to the grassroots from one place to another. So, and so that's where uh, we are So at. now saying specifically... Yeah. Um, well, let's be categorical. Uh, you haven't recorded any incident security-wise? Absolutely none. Well, congratulations. Uh, now, Farouk, it comes back to you. <laughs> and uh, this uh, is something that the police should also be in charge. Uh, now, where is the police in all of this? If you say uh, some of the uh, names uh, you have just reeled out, which you say you st you're standing by because you have your facts, uh, the police commissioner in Kogi State have you also reached out, uh, speaking of the SDP? Okay, now let me tell you. The police commissioner in Kogi State, about six weeks ago, where we got intelligence that they had uh, deployed policemen to go and attack our supporters in Kotuluka government, and we raised the alarm. I now said we shouldn't drag them into politics. In that same Koto, a few weeks after, we tried to hold a rally. Talks came at us with gone. And started shooting at us. They even shot one of their own persons. I mean, they, they, what they call friendly fire. They shot one lady there. And the police commissioner accused us of doing it. Even when he gave us a date for rally, we wrote to the police, got a date to hold our rally. Then that same day, those APC people came there to attack our rally. Not one person has been arrested. We gave the names of the people who did that attack. We gave the names. They, they, I mean, it was broad daylight. In the palace, of the traditional ruler of Koto, they came there to attack us. These things were on video. These dogs mm. were on video, shooting at us. Not one of them have been arrested. Now, so now, now uh, the Mr. Same, Mr. Dejo, very yes. quickly, so that um, we can maximize the time. Th there's going to be a peace accord to be signed tomorrow. Yes. Are you aware of that? How much impact will it have, really, on all of this, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, violence? Let situation? me tell you what happened at the last peace accord in Koto. Yeah, mm. I've mentioned this before. The candidate of the SDP then, was uh, Senator Natasha, now Senator Natasha Koti. When she came to that peace accord, the Inspector General of Police was seated. The Chairman of INEC was seated. When Natasha came there, talks of Belo seized Natasha, rough handled her, and were tearing her clothes to strip her naked. It was soldiers in that place that rescued her. Those things are just ceremonial. They are window dressing. The truth of the matter, the only way we can have peace is if uh, uh, our governor, decides that, okay, I'm going to abide by law and order. He has immunity, so nothing will happen to him. And if the security chiefs in Kogi will agree that, yes, they have a constitutional duty to protect anybody and not work for whoever is the so-called chief security officer of the state. I'm saying that the commissioner claimed credit for why the is, attack. Why is your state, Kogi, uh, this way? Has Kogi always been a hotbed for... Uh, political violence in 2000 and 2011 when we held our governorship election not one person died i don't i can't remember if there was even any complaint of anybody who sustained injuries in 2015 when we held when the presidential election was held and our governorship election was held nobody died but since 
Duelo came. August 2018 was the first time two people were killed. One of them was a son of an APC chieftain who is a member of the House of Assembly. Are you saying Bello is the cause of the violence in Kogi Absolutely. State? Absolutely. Absolutely. He doesn't pretend about it. Bello goes around singing war songs. The last time he went to campaign for Aketi Inondo, he was there singing this song they call ta 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 That whoever does not agree with them, the person will receive bullets. These are the war songs that they sing to attack people. Those are the songs of the talks. Bello himself sings the songs publicly. All right. This is the same man who took talks to so even his own APC secretariat here. So Togri is a bulletin in Kogi, and our, 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 you see, our frustration is that those who are law enforcement agents who are supposed to protect everybody are the collaborators who unleash talks on people. About two weeks ago, we, some talks ambushed our candidate in the night, and our police people resisted them. When we pursued those talks to the bush, the ones we arrested, one of them was a serving police officer. We raised alarm. It was everywhere. The video is everywhere in Nigeria. Wow. Till now, we have not heard anything. I think, uh, so uh, they, they rent out policemen and uh, GSS people to go and attack people uh, with talks. Wow. They follow talks around. I think we have to uh, uh, leave it here, Farouk uh, Dejo. And uh, you've also said uh, you, you, you're standing by everywhere. I stand by it. And, so and, and I'm saying, I, I, let those in Ajayi arrest me. So, uh, then we'll tell him more things. Well, that the, the we're, device we're, he uses in we'll 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 we're, we're a country of laws, and we hope yep. uh, that the authorities will take charge. Uh, yes. So, Farouk Adejo, I would like to thank you for your time. And, of course, uh, Nelson Ogohi, thank you for being our guest tonight My on pleasure. Newsnight.